Alchemists, welcome back to our series, Back Onto Live View. Now, I will be going back to our Flutter Absinthe series probably next week. I've been quite busy. Um, I wanted to create a video for today, which is Friday. Um, and uh, recently, I had an interesting problem that was actually quite easy to solve with Elixir. Now, the problem with Live View is that as soon as you lose this connection and you reconnect, you're going to lose all the intermediate state that you didn't save. So I had a client who, um, what happened was I integrated multi-language for them. And while they're filling out the form, some of the users, they would change language. And in turn, before they saved the form, before they saved what they were working on, they decided to change languages. And in that case, we actually ended up losing all the data that they worked on. And so a couple of the people were quite upset. Um, so therefore I had to come up with a good solution and that solution was using a cache. So now we actually will cache uh, all the intermediate data. So when they reconnect, um, there's no problem. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a cache in live view. So therefore you won't be losing any data before you actually commit that data to, uh, to your project. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's get started. First thing is go to your mix file and I'm going to have to add in this thing called Cache X, which is a pretty good library in my opinion. So it's Cache X and should be around version 3.2 at this time. Do our famous mix steps git. And now we actually have to set up our cache. So this is going to cache, I believe, inside of ETS, but it's going to give us a very, very nice interface. So we have to go to our application. And we're going to add a cache to our tree. Now, I couldn't find a very good way to set up caching using the typical, you know, module name or module name with uh, using the uh, tuple style. So I had to go ahead and use the uh, supervisor spec. So if anybody has a idea how to make this thing work using, you know, typical like this, uh, I would be very happy to know that. So it's not so ugly, ugly looking. So what we need to do is we need to set up a supervisor spec for a worker. And our worker is the cache X module. And we need to pass it a list of arguments in order to start up a cache. Because we'll check, you can actually start up quite a few different caches if you like. So I'm just going to start up a simple user cache that we can actually use across all of our different modules. And we don't want to keep this in uh, memory for forever just in case we have a lot of users so we can also set up an expiration and in order to accept the expiration I have to also import cachex.spec and within here we're gonna have the expiration and that will be default expiration and we want this to be Every one hour, we're going to expire those records and just delete them so we don't have a huge amount of data in our in-memory ETS cache. And we're gonna expire anything over an hour um, at every hour. So let me just format that so it looks a little bit easier. So we're going to create a in-memory ETS cache using CacheX. The name will be called user cache going to have an expiration of about every hour, one hour actually. So, and then we're going to run all to run a uh, cleanup task every hour. Okay. So just every hour, anything one hour or older will be removed from our ETS table. So therefore we don't have a very big ETS table. Now I'm going to do our typical style of actually writing a test. So I'm just going to add this only to the edit. Uh, you guys can get the idea and use it in other places if you like. So what I'm going to do is go to um, the edit test. And what I want to show is that, you know, every time somebody edits the user, they disconnect uh, and they come back, they're going to see their changes still apply the next time they connect. So can continue editing user from the session new section session when I actually connect. So we need our account, of course. We're going to need our user. And I'm just going to steal, basically, this part. 
And I'm also going to steal this. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually check that when we try to validate that user. So basically we're making a change. When we stop our current live view session and we begin a new live view session. I can actually just grab this part, which I'm going to do. So when we stop our old live view session, we begin a new live view session. So basically when the user disconnects from the WebSocket, we should actually see uh, our validation error. So actually I need this in two places. So one of course is here. So make sure that this actually shows up. And then of course here to make sure that uh, when we do reconnect immediately, we're gonna see this. So of course we run our test and we should definitely see a failure. failure and it's exactly where we should be failing line 66 which is here so now we're going to make this test pass we're going to go to our live view session and to our user edit page so how to actually make this work is actually quite simple and I'll walk you through it very easily so we have some attributes and what we want to do is we want to call cache x we want to call the get method. And this is going to take our cache, a key, and any kind of options. We don't really need the options, but what we do need is our cache key. So, uh, sorry, I can actually remember it. Usually I don't remember, but user cache remembers the name of our cache. Uh, the key in this case, what I like to do is use a tuple of the module name and also the user's ID. Now, if it's not there, we're going to get OK and a nil. In that case, we just return back an empty list. Now, if there is something there, we will return back those attributes. And then all we need to do is put this over here. And then finally, we need to run, just run this through the validator so that way our tests will end up passing. And remember to validate is just map.put. We to put an action onto our change set. And it's going to be update to match our style right here. And then finally, we actually need to put a cache value there, or else it's going to be forever empty. So very simple cache x put user cache. Uh, in this case, again, it's going to be tuple of module name plus the user's ID. And we're going to put it there. So therefore, we're going to actually have to put our user params. Now, when we run our test, everything should pass. There we go. Test was passed. So now, if you actually run up the application, you will see uh, everything working. And actually, I'll just go ahead and show you guys that. So let's, let's go ahead and let's run our app. So mix Phoenix server just so you can take a look at that okay so initially we have this now if I write test in there refresh everything's okay if I write test 222 and again I'm going to refresh you'll see the spinner come up and if I do this and again I'll show you I am refreshing you'll see that we are making have the validations going so that is how you can use caching to make your pages more resilient to any kind of problems that may happen, disconnections, things like that. So this is Alan from Plangora. Please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, feel free to leave me any questions in the comments or request any kind of videos. I'll try to start taking some of these uh, topics that you guys have asked me uh, once things start to calm down. Uh, anyways, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, bye. Hi. Please feel free to ask us any questions about Elixir, 
Flutter, or anything else in programming. Here's our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll answer your questions every Friday. Ya mantai, ge duck man all. Yo wenti, ji da wen wo.